Kia ora everybody, welcome to the new podcast. My name is Tehonui Tuna and the name of the show is Creative Curiosity. Hope you're all having a good day. I'm pretty, pretty stoked to be here. I've been thinking about this idea for a little bit and um, yeah, this is episode one. I'll just talk about the show and the whole aim for this podcast uh, right now and then I'll get into my story. So the concept for Creative Curiosity came up a couple of months ago and I was talking with my brother Rance uh, Ranira, aka Plant Based Māori. Uh, you fellas probably already know him if you know me. And um, I remember knowing that I wanted to do podcasting and getting into the space because it's definitely a space that I've taken a lot of value from, from people like Gary V, from Tony Robbins, um, Tim Ferriss, you know, all the greats, Joe Rogan, all those people. And I knew that this was a space that I wanted to eventually move it towards. But I uh, didn't know how to approach it and what sort of uh, unique angle to look at it. And then uh, a few weeks ago, I realized that I wanted it to be about um, creativity and getting guests on here. And um, the whole point of this show is going to be delving into the creative mind. So getting guests on here, learning their backstories, learning how they got to where they are now and giving you the listener practical advice on how to go from where you are now to where you want to be so if you're an amateur artist and that's all sorts of artists so not just visual but also um, musical artists as well and um, hopefully you guys can get some insight and some practical steps to take in order to become a professional at what you do whatever that is and I'm just keen to learn from other artists as well and to fill my kete up so I can get better as well as an artist. Um, so this episode is going to be about my journey and my story. And hopefully I can give you guys some practical steps uh, for you guys to take. Um, for you guys to move towards um, being better and being a professional. And making a living from your art. Whatever that may be. So um, yeah, my name is Tehonui Tuna. I'm from a little place called Waimana and a little place called Ruatoki and I was born here in Fakatane, currently living in Fakatane, and I'm the third or oh, the fourth child. I'm the fourth child. So I've got an older brother, Hohepa, and I've got two older siblings, uh, but they both passed away uh when they were babies. One was stillborn and one was I believe a uh, week when um they passed away. And I remember being a bit younger, we used to talk about them every now and then, but as we got older, we sort of didn't really talk about them, and um, I talk about them openly now, like, always acknowledge them when people ask me how many siblings I have. Um, yeah, so it's it's pretty buzzy to think about, um, yeah, and then me, of course, and then my younger brother Troj, Trojan, he's um, my little brother who's like way taller than me, if you fellas know him. You fellas know. <laughs> and then my younger sister, Maramena, who lives down in Dunedin at the moment. I uh, grew up uh, humbly in Waimana. Went to Waimana Primary School. Um, our The role of children at that school sort of floated around 100. So a little bit less than 100. Sometimes it'll go above 100. And most of the kids from our school were whānau. So they, they were cousins or um, they would be related somewhere up the line. Um, loved loved growing up in Waimana. We grew up at our nans as well. My nan, um, she lived up the road a bit at, at a place called Rarua, which is our other home. And um, we grew up up the bush with her on our marae. We used to go eeling most days as kids. She lived in front of this hill. And uh, I remember we used to go up there as kids and throw pine cones around. Um, my childhood was pretty much... Um, yeah, eeling. We didn't even eat eels. Like we just used to catch them for fun and just chuck them back in the river, and we'd just carry on eeling up the river until we got hungry and would go back and eat scrambled eggs on toast, or baked beans on toast. That was the go-to. <laughs> um, you know, I loved it. I've been doing art my whole life. Literally, my earliest memory is um, drawing, and it was drawing uh, the font from the Three Ninjas. I don't know if you remember it, but Three Ninjas was was the jam back in the day back when we had VHS tapes, for those of you who are 12 and you're listening and you don't know what a VHS tape is. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, no, there were were some good days. I did my first art competition when I was five at Waimana School. I remember it vividly. Uh, It was a colouring competition and it was run through one of the local photography stores here in town called Laser Cameras and Photos. And um, the owner was actually from Waimana. And I remember the picture. It was like a cowboy and two bloodhounds. And he had like guns and stuff. It was real simple. And um, yeah, I ended up winning that competition. And I was stoked about that. And I won a disposable camera. Um, Back in those days, this disposable camera may as well have been an iPhone for a five-year-old. And funnily enough, I lost that camera. So I didn't even know what happened to it. Didn't get those photos developed. I cannot remember one photo that I took with it. But uh, yeah, that was an early taste of victory. Um, ended up doing a few other colouring competitions. Uh, my dad ended up being um, my art teacher. He ended up being our art teacher at Waimana School. And he was definitely my art mentor. He exposed me to a lot of other forms of art, like comic book art, fantasy art, which still inform my work today. So I'm stoked about that. Um, also... Yeah, so back to the colouring competitions. Uh, another vivid memory I have was of a Harry Potter colouring competition run through Video Easy. And um, the way this competition worked, it was run across the whole Eastern Bay of Plenty. And they chose the top 50 uh, works and then they displayed them at Video Easy here in Fakatani. And um, it was a public vote. So what they did was they covered up all the names so Farno couldn't vote for their kids just because it was their kids. So it was purely about um, artistic ability, which I'm stoked about. So they covered up all the names and the public could vote. And to cast a vote, they had to pay 50 cents. And um, obviously, whoever got the most votes was the winner. And um, I ended up getting the most votes. And those 50 cent votes, they all added up to 500 and something dollars, which went to the school, not me, uh, unfortunately. (laughs) And um, the school won a DVD player as well back when DVD players were like brand new, so that was pretty cool, and a, what else, oh, and then the best, one of the best prizes I've ever won in my life, which was a $100 um, video easy voucher, and believe you me, that all went on video games, so I grew up playing Spaces and always wanting to play the game, if I wasn't allowed to play the game, I was probably drawing, uh, yeah, so that was the Harry Potter competition, um, yeah, I loved it. And then um, one of the big competitions that I entered was uh, America's Cup competition. I was 10 years old. This was 2002. And it was a national competition. I think it may have been the first national competition I entered. And um, the prize was a trip for two to Auckland because that was the year that they had the America's Cup here in Auckland. And... Um, yeah, the prize was a trip for two, so for the winner and a parent or guardian to Auckland, staying in a flash hotel, uh, spending money, I think, and um, yeah, up there for the whole America's Cup, or for the finals at least, I think, and then um, I came second, I didn't win, <laughs> and I got a jersey, <laughs> and I, I think my mum still got it somewhere, um, it was bittersweet, like, you know, it's cool, like, being second in the country, but gutting like so close and they only sort of gave me a jersey because um my work was good enough for them to want to give me something because because of the because the prize was so big they only um wanted to just give away one price and um so no second place um so I'm pretty stoked that they gave me something um got in the newspaper for that which I'm stoked about and come to think of it, like, that was probably the most time I spent in the newspaper was back in my senior years at Waimana School, so early 2000s, uh, for art competitions. And it was cool because back then I was a curious kid who just loved drawing. Um, yeah, and then uh, another one was America. Oh, no, not America's Cup. It was Olympics. I did an Olympic competition. Same national title again. And this one I won, so I was stoked about this one, and um, the prize was my artwork got flown to Athens that year to be displayed in the Olympic, New Zealand Olympic Village. Um, My artwork went, not me. (laughs) So um, cool, but not cool at the same time, I would have loved to have 
going on my first overseas trip. Um, but yeah, that was cool, like just to have my art um, exposed to more people than just my local community. And um, yeah, that that went really well. And then I ended up getting a contract to do another piece for the New Zealand Olympic Committee for the Winter Olympics, which was in Italy, Turin, uh, that year. And my dad, he helped me heaps. He, he sort of... Um, he sort of helped navigate through um, coming up with a style. So pretty much the style that I was doing at the time was um, a style that my dad was into. And like, you know, I was young. There's no possible way that I could have a style at that age. Um, so yeah, that was a big um, sort of shifting in my ability and in my... That was a big shifting in my ability and in my style. Hopefully this audio sounds alright as well. Uh, I just realised my mic was turning a bit. And then, um, so that was one minute school. Uh, loved it, loved it. Um, still got some really, really good mates from one minute school, and um, a couple of them in particular, my brother Rory and my brother Reese. Uh, we still get together every now and then to play video games. Um, we went to a midnight release last year of Red Dead Redemption. Stoked. Um, yeah, anyway, I uh, went to Rotorua Boys after that for two years, wasn't my cup of tea, um, didn't like playing rugby growing up, I just played it because that was the sport you played if you were a boy who lived in New Zealand, and um, like, I was just too scared, soft, didn't want to get hit, I was real, like, just super, I was shy kid, um, real emotional, like, wouldn't take much for me to cry, like, just getting a decent growling would make me cry. Um, so getting hit on the field was not my cup of tea, I'd rather not, and then, um, yeah, so we left, uh, my brother had uh, ended up being at Boys High as well with me, we ended up leaving, and we came back here to Fakhtani High School, which I'm stoked about, um, ended up being some of the best years of my life, met my best mate Ranira there, and, um, my other best mate, uh, Rodney, and he lives over in Australia, and, um, you know when you make like really really good mates and you can be apart for years and years and whenever you get back together it's like you never left you pick up where you left off so yeah that's that's all my brothers are for me um loved high school and one of the biggest things for me so i'm going to get a little bit vulnerable here which i'm hoping this space can be for some other artists and this is just being real but one of the biggest regrets of my life was at high school so, um, after high school, I wanted to go down to Massey down in Wellington to study art. I'd gone to the orientation day, um, looked really cool. I could picture myself living there. I, I love Wellington. It's a cool city, real arty. And it was kind of like, um, a hipster, I suppose you'd say it. And at the time I was just, I always wanted to be different and was keen to be different. So I had put all my eggs in this basket and I applied to get a Messi and um, I got the letter back and I didn't get in. And the reason I didn't get in was because I didn't have my literacy credits. So I didn't. I needed four more literacy credits. And um, the way I could get those credits was through reading and doing book reviews. And back then, um, I hated reading. Like I, I hated reading and a big reason behind me hating reading was because a lot of times like you know growing up you felt like you just had to read stuff that you didn't really care about so that's already just a big turn off and anyway I cheated and this is like I said this is a big ass um, regret of mine and what I did was I got my cousin to do it to do my book review and he was a he's a cousin who loves reading he was like you know as often as people are on their phones today that's how often he was reading in the car, on the bus, at home, at school, everywhere he was reading. And um, at the time, I had already started tattooing. And I sort of just said, like, oh, I'll, I'll tattoo you. And he was keen to get um, a tattoo as well. So it was, in my mind, you know, just young and dumb. I didn't see anything wrong with it. It was just a, a fair exchange. And then we did it. Oh, he did my book reviews. And it was 12, like, Believe it or not, 12 books, reading 12 books and then doing 12 book reviews was ridiculous for just four credits in my mind. Anyway, yeah, so I did that. Um, didn't think too much of it until um, one day with my mum, we were in the car and 
she told me that she had heard something disturbing about me and straight away my heart sank and I knew what it was about and it was yeah it was about that she had heard and she told me how pretty much how disappointed she was and um that's when the coin really dropped for me and I realized how bad that was and um even to this day you know I look back at it and um I would say I regret it but I would say I don't as well because I probably wouldn't have become who I am now if that didn't happen so no I definitely wouldn't have become who I am if that didn't happen so I'm grateful for it um I'm not proud of it but I'm grateful for it and then um what had happened from that is it had turned me into uh sort of like a it made me not want to let my mum down again or let my parents down again like that so I um I worked hard I ended up going to Wintech up in Hamilton, studied there for three years, uh, got my degree, bachelor, um, loved it and hated it, um, university is a strange thing I reckon, um, I love that you can go to a place to study like cool subjects and the facilities are there but I hate how you have to get a certain amount of credits and it doesn't matter how you get some of those credits, like f to them it's just as long as you fill in numbers and I just, you know, I just thought it was unnecessary studying some papers that I didn't want to do just in order to tick some boxes so yeah that's my hate part of university the love part was the facilities and the people with connections that I made and um yeah graduated in 2014 ended up moving down to Palmy with my darling so my darling and I have been together for nine years now um high school sweethearts I was out of high school she was in high school but I went to high school for band practice so kind of high school sweethearts <laughs> Um, yeah, we went down to Palmy, and it was to, for her to go to university down there. Spent three years down there, and probably the three least favorite years of my life, definitely. I ended up gaining a lot of weight. Uh, I got up to 127 kilos, and I reckon I got up to 130. 127 was just one of the days that I weighed myself. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just felt that real sense of, um, disconnection we were far away from home um, we didn't really know anyone um, yeah it was that and just Palmy the weather the weather played a big part of it uh, if you're from Palmy um, no offence but man I don't like that place eh? <laughs> uh, and especially coming from here from Whakatane area where it's sunny most of the time yeah it was just a huge contrast but I'm glad we went down there because it, um, it sort of, I learned of a few good lessons. I worked at a tattoo shop down there. Um, I ended up leaving and that was the beginning of working for myself. I ended up starting to work for myself. It was 2014. And I made the decision back then that I wouldn't work for anyone unless I really, really had to. And that all the tools that I have or that I need are right here my hands. And um, if I can be resourceful, I can achieve whatever it is that I want to achieve. Um, yeah, didn't like it down at Palmy. Um, and I just realized that the other week that that was my depression. I was depressed down there and I was too ashamed to admit it, I would say. I didn't, you know, in my mind, um, you know, only weak people got depressed and um, that was just my ridiculous, I would say, masculine mentality trying to be strong even though I'm broken and I'm not strong. So yeah, now being where I am now, I realise that yeah, I was depressed down there and um, sucked obviously, but I'm glad that it happened because I learned a lot of good lessons and yeah, like I say, I wouldn't be where I am now if, if that didn't happen. Uh, we moved home at the end of 2016, and boy, was it good to move home. Um, November 2016, we moved home. November 3rd, to be exact. Um, we got ourselves a dog, a second dog. So we've got a little dog, Peanut. Um, and then we got a second dog. So we lived on a street, and we had an SPCA down the road, and we got us a second dog, and we named her Butter, of course. Naturally, if you've got a Peanut, you're going to name the next one Butter. So now we've got a peanut and a butter, and um, yeah, we love them. They're definitely our babies. 
and uh, my partner taught me how to um, love dogs and love animals more I would say and I was scared of dogs growing up I was scared that I'd get bitten and like for real scared like I even made up a lie that when I was a kid that I was allergic to them just so I could stay away from them now I realize that they're just bundles of joy and they just want to love you as well as be loved um yeah so being home working in this cabin that I'm in right now um and towards the future so I'm doing muko now still uh this is my 13th year of this month is my 13th year of um tattooing slash doing muko and that's crazy to think about I was 15 when I was start when I started um yeah it's amazing actually and um as you all know last this time last year I was supposed to retire and the reason for that was because I was over it I just uh it wasn't um fulfilling me anymore like I had been doing muko for so long and I feel like I had just achieved all the things that I wanted to achieve in that domain and then it started feeling like a job and I believe in creativity if you've got a choice and things start feeling like a job you need to do something about it so me I felt like I had to do something radical and that was I wanted to retire and also it was part of it was the quote burn your boats if you want to take the island so it's about um, just taking the leap of faith really giving yourself no excuse and I wanted to get into film I still want to get into film but things have changed since then I ended up shifting instead of retiring from Moko to doing it part-time raising my prices um, and then in the rest of the time doing other creative um, endeavors which I'm stoked about so this year has been a real uh, learning year and um, a real curiously creative year uh, shameless name drop <laughs> and um now where i'm at I'm, I'm super super blessed super grateful um excited about the future i've got a few things in the pipes with my darling and um they're all creative things and they're all things that serve a bigger purpose and for me my mission in life at the moment and i believe into the future is to inspire my people inspire maori people to be proud of who you are through storytelling, through Māori storytelling. And um, that's through the visual arts because that to me, and I'm super blessed to be in the position that I'm in. And um, yeah, I'm grateful that you're all here on the journey with me. And I'm grateful to have the, um, to have had the upbringing and the ups and downs that I've had in the past in order to shape me into the man that I'm proud to be. Um, yeah, so that's my story. Uh, I'll give three practical ad three practical steps for all you budding artists out there who want to become professionals. Uh, one, uh, and I want these to be practical, not just airy fairy, um, metaphorical sort of things. One, um, which is advice that I need to take myself, is to create every day, draw every day. This was something that I did as a young kid. So if you're an artist, if you're someone who does visual arts, draw. Whatever you like drawing, draw that. Draw at least one thing every day. And what I would recommend is to draw the things that you love. Um, and to take up, take any opportunity that you get. Anyone who asks you for work, if you're nobody with no reputation, say yes to everything. Say yes to every opportunity you can get. Because that's going to help create a reputation for you. And you're... At the start, beggars can't be choosers. You can't pick and choose if you want to get to where you are. Even if you have to do it for free, I've heard this advice heaps and it was something that I did a lot going um, coming up and I still do it now. So create every day. Musician, create a song every day or practice singing every day, practice playing the guitar every day, whatever it is. So that's one. Number two, um, every day find its inspiration. So look for artists every day. So I'm always on Instagram, I always find artists, and save images, save images um, on your phone, on the, your, your computer, whatever, and um, if you're a musician, you find music, musicians every day, if there's one small thing in that song, in that piece of artwork, save it, because you never know when that inspiration will hit, it may hit a year from now, and that's happened for me, and it's 
definitely one of the reasons that I am where I am. So one, create every day. Number two, seek for inspiration from artists, not just inspiration from out in the environment, from artists specifically. If then Because you're coming up, you're still trying to shape and form and find your niche. You're trying to find your unique thing you can contribute to this world. And step number three, I would say use social media. Step number three, use social media. Instagram, especially if you're creative, Instagram should be your number one. Facebook should be your number two, in my mind. Um, upload, upload all your works, all of it, sketches, anything. And that's, if you have a look back in my Instagram, have a look at the stuff that I uploaded, it was all sorts. Um, anything that I liked and create for you. Like, try not to let people dictate the work that you create. Create the stuff that you love, because if you love it, eventually the people that will come to you and people who are willing to pay are going to be people who are willing to pay you for the work that you love to create, which is a position that I'm in right now, so I'm stoked about that. So um, yeah, I hope uh, you've enjoyed that. Step one, create every day. Step two, seek inspiration from other artists every day. And step three, um, upload your work onto social media. Instagram, number one. And um, just keep doing it. Don't worry about the followers. Um, eventually, people will come. And um, yeah, I hope this has been informative. It's been valuable to you. It's definitely um, an exciting space to be in for me. And I'm stoked to see where this journey goes. Um, stay tuned. My first guest is going to be my brother, Simon McLeod, uh, a.k.a. Uhi Wero on Instagram and Facebook. He's a moko artist and he's done all my time moko. This is my second piece from him. This is my first one. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. And we've got some treats for you in terms of visuals. So, Mauri Oro Te Whanau. Thank you, fellas, for dropping in. This is Creative Curiosity. My name is Te Honu Tuna. See you next time. Thumb snaps. Let's go.